Welcome to the Open to Hope Show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host. Dr. Heidi Horsley. Well, Heidi, we're going to have a show today which, oh, I guess I should remind you first that this show is brought to you by the Open to Hope Foundation in partnership with the Compassionate Friends. And we're going to have a show today that I know is dear to your heart because it's sibling loss. But it is a unique sibling loss because it is a twin loss, right. which really makes it different. And I think sometimes people do think, oh, a sibling loss is a sibling loss. But when the sibling's a twin, it's a whole different thing, isn't it? Mom, you know what? It is, and I didn't realize, and I've talked to you about this, but in June, I keynoted for the, at the Twinless Twins Conference. And I was a sibling, and I'm a brief sibling, and I've done a lot of keynotes, so I thought, well, this is not going to be hard. This is going to be what I always do. I learned so much about twins, things that I had no idea. I think I've minimized all these years the bond in utero before birth mm -hmm. between twins. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how impactful it is. I mean, these twins have known each other for nine months before they even came into the world. Mm -hmm. So they have their own language, they have their own you know, mannerisms, they understand each other on a level that is very, very unique. And the other thing I learned is that when people have a twin loss, they lose part of themselves. They don't know who they are in the world without their twin. And sometimes they even fill in for the roles that their twin played. Mm -hmm. Like if the twin was extroverted and they were introverted, they might all of a sudden step up and feel that they have to be more extroverted than usual. So it's a, almost an identity, a, a, an identity crisis. Mm -hmm. Tasha Hepburn, like I said, I met her at the Twinless Twin Conference, and she is on a journey of a thousand healing hugs. So during the next three years, Mom, she's going to give a thousand hugs. Hopefully, this is her goal to a thousand twins all over the country, right, Tasha? Mm -hmm. And you, mm -hmm. you go in a van all over the country, don't you? A bus, yes. A I bus. Have a bus. I and love it's this. For twinless twins. So not just any twins. It needs to be twins that have lost lost their twin. So twinless twins mm -hmm. and gives them hugs. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can go on her site and request a hug okay. and request that she meet you. Um, and also, the other thing I want to say about her, and she educated me at the Twinless Twin Conference. I got a lot of education, which was good. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I needed it. <laughs> She is really someone that's very positive and wants to bring hope to the world and say, look, you can find hope again. And she wants to bring it from twinless to twin full. Mm -hmm. Because like our twins today will tell you, you're always part of a twinship. You're never twinless. The twins are maybe not physically here, but they're always part of you and your identity. And then next to her, Carolyn knows this as well as anybody, Carolyn Shane and Carolyn I met her at the conference also, but she also did a fabulous workshop on resilience at the conference, and she mm -hmm. does workshops. They're both very active members of the Twinless Twin organization, and Carolyn is a regional coordinator in New Jersey and New York as well yes. Yes. for mm -hmm. the Twinless Twins organization. And I got pictures, as you all know, with both of you that we're putting up on the show with you and your twins, and it just totally touched my heart. I was mm -hmm. showing them to my mom because I don't know, there's something about twins that I love, first of all. And it was so amazing seeing you guys together with your twins and seeing your twin in you and you in your twin. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot more twinning, too, because there are a lot more twins. So yes. your organization of what you're doing is so important because it's going to be more and more with the in vitro fertilization. Yeah. We know there are going to be a lot more twins in the world. So thank goodness there are people like you going around and, and helping people that have had this loss. I want to ask you, has Heidi characterized this all all right? I'm just kind of amazed. <laughs> yes, yes, I think she's done a fabulous job. Yes. She <laughs> understands. She gets it now. I get it now. It's, it's, it's a learning curve. Yes. And I want to know if you both felt like the twin loss is given enough support or do you feel like it's a minimized loss that people don't understand? I think Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't even understand at the okay, beginning, yeah. you know, because when as a twin, you don't necessarily believe that you'll ever be without your twin. Mm -hmm. So when you suddenly find yourself without your twin, it's very shocking. I think what's important to understand is that what makes the bond so unique is that while we're in vitro, we're actually biochemically syncing with each other. Wow. So our bodies are actually configured differently mm -hmm. than those who did not share a womb. So why it's so powerful for twinless twins mm -hmm. to get together, which will hopefully be twinful twins, yeah. which mm -hmm. I believe Carol and I are both twinful twins, um, 
when we get together, we, our biochemistry, even though we didn't share the womb, because our bodies are wired to sync up, we can sync up within 20 to 30 seconds of being next to each other. And you can start experiencing those twin full moments, twin moments, um, with the twin that you're around. And it's not even necessarily your twin. Oh my twin. gosh, that's, that's fascinating. When you, when you were saying that, I'm like, what is twinning and twinning yes. again? And now I'm hearing you. <laughs> Your energy just totally. together, and I'm at is literally covered in goosebumps up. right now. Yeah, so, so, am I. so we do yeah. we do this all the time, and we start finishing each other's sentences, and we we just sync up with each other, and, and that's I the gift of being a twin. Completely saw that at Twinless Twins, mm -hmm. and I have never felt so much like a singleton. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a bad like, thing. This right? is so <laughs> weird. I feel like I'm a single person. All these twins are in this energy together and buzzing together, and I definitely feel out of that space. I'm not in that space. Yeah, well, you definitely feel it. I mean, you don't even have to tell your story or yeah. share your experience because we've all been on the same road. We may be on different places on the road of healing or path of healing but we all understand each other because it's the same. It's the same experience for all of us. And uh, now, I want to know how you've gotten there because my husband's favorite singer in the whole world is Elvis. Yes. <laughs> and he, he, his brother was, what was his name? I don't know. Elvis I think it was, was a Enos. twin. Elvis, Elvis, was Enos. A, Elvis is a twin. I think That's it was the first Enos. I've ever heard of that. I'm, what was it? Aaron. 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 Oh, okay. Wow. Our producer wow. just said it, Aaron. Okay. But I heard Elvis talking about that several times. I had no he idea. never got to the place where you guys are. Mm -hmm. He he suffered with mm -hmm. that loss, and I don't think he ever. You know, he just mentioned his, his it. His twin died when yeah. he was when he was born in birth. Mm -hmm. Wow. I didn't yeah. Know this. He would it's, sit and talk to his shadow or talk in the mirror to himself as though his twin was still living. Wow, yes. that's amazing. But I don't think you ever got a new organization, so I want to know how you guys have gotten to the point. How did you figure out, I assume, in order to connect, you have to have figured out who you are without your twin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because I have a little bit, excuse me, I have a little bit of a different experience because my twin was born severely mentally retarded. So mm -hmm. here I was a twin. I was referred to as a twin but I didn't have a healthy twin relationship with my twin with memories and experiences and going to school. Um, and growing up, mm -hmm. um, I always blamed myself that I was a surviving twin. I, I had survivor's guilt because why was I healthy and my twin wasn't born healthy? What was my life supposed to be like? And it wasn't until I attended my very first um, Twinless Twin support group conference that so when I told my story someone in the audience turned around and looked at me and said oh my god it's like you lost him twice wow and when she that who, I don't even remember who said mm -hmm. it to me because everyone was was over a hundred people so yeah. I don't remember who said it but I owe so much to that person because she finally said in words how I felt all my life. Mm -hmm. That you lost him twice because he, he was, was institutionalized. Born. Yes, Tell, it, when, we were, when we were five, he was institutionalized. And I, we were not... Um, at that time, they, he was retarded? He and was, at yeah, that time, born. they institutionalized yes, kids? because my mother couldn't take care of him anymore, mm -hmm. so he lived at home for the first five years so of our life. So he just disappeared? And he just... Well, he went to his school, right. and I went to my school. That's the way it was explained. And it wasn't until I was a senior in college that I um, read an article um, when I was taking a special ed course that was about um, twin language. Yeah. And that brought back a memory that I had of when he and I were tested for having twin language. And it turned out we were tested and I was in this article wow. about twin language, reading about my twin and myself. And I said, oh my God, that's me. The names were that's changed, amazing. but that was me. And that's how I learned what happened to my twin in utero and when he was born, and that, and we were tested, and we did have twin language. Well, I, I remember you saying, Carolyn, when I met you, that you had to speak for him, and you, you had to do a lot for him, because you yeah. knew, to your parents, to your family, to everybody, right? Everybody. Because you kind of knew what he wanted and what was going on with them, because you guys were twins. Exactly. I always knew. And, and I can imagine that, that being separated then at five must have been difficult. It was horrible. I it bet. was horrible because I didn't understand it. And in the era of when I was born, mm -hmm. people still had mental retardation as a 
yes. inherited disease or a disease you could catch. Right. And people were still kept in basements or attics or hidden away. Mm -hmm. So the first five years of my life, um, I didn't even have a friend because people were afraid that I would give their their child this disease. Wow. So I had a very different experience, unfortunately, uh, than most people. Mm -hmm. And how old was position. he when he died? He died at the age of 47. And mm -hmm. did that change for you when he did die? Was that, had you seen him? And oh, yes. Well, I didn't s see him as regularly as I wanted because at one point my husband and I were um, transferred to New Jersey and mm -hmm. I'm originally from Chicago. But I knew something was wrong with him for mm -hmm. two weeks. Wow. I was in a state of terrible depression, mm -hmm. not knowing what was happening. I knew something was happening, so but I didn't feel, know what. You could feel. That's another right. thing I heard twins say. They I can knew, feel what's going on with their twin. Mm -hmm. I knew something was horrible. My mother did not owe up to it because she was trying to protect me. Mm -hmm. And um, she finally had to tell me that he was in the hospital and he was diagnosed with cancer. And I said, well, we have to go there. And my mother said, well, he won't know the difference. And, my mother, and I said, he may not know you, but he'll know who I am. Wow. And he did. And when we did fly out there, and I said, we had to be there till Tuesday. We left, I wanted to be there Thursday to, through Tuesday. Yeah. But it turned out my mother didn't want to be there that long. So we were there Saturday. And I said, I don't care when we get there, but we have to be there through Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And I lost the argument. We came home Monday night, and my brother died Tuesday morning. Wow. Mm -hmm. so now, how did I know that? I thought I was the only person in the whole world. Mm -hmm. How could I have been the only twin in the whole world that lost a twin? Right. It wasn't. Right. It didn't make mm -hmm. sense, but I had right. no way of contacting anyone. And a friend of mine read an article in the New York Times, mm -hmm. told me about it, mm -hmm. and that was the beginning of where I realized I wasn't alone, and that's the thing. We all think we're al alone yeah. in this horrific grief because mm -hmm. people don't understand it. Our own parents There's don't. thousands of us. Well, yeah, don't There's understand it. thousands of well, us. Well, what was interesting at the Twinless Twins is how many twins said to me that, si that their siblings don't understand, don't understand sure. it, even yeah. though their siblings had the death of their, their sibling, which is your twin, they still don't understand it. Right, because they're not a twin. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. They don't have they're that biochemical yes. synchronization. <laughs> exactly. And then you feel like you do because you're, you're so used to syncing with each other that once that, that energy is gone, it's, it's almost like a live wire. You know, there's a plug and you're supposed to plug into something because mm -hmm. you've had that since your creation. Um, and that's what's so powerful about being around another twin is that you get to plug into somebody and you, you synchronize and mm -hmm. it's, 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 a, it's so important for a twin to uh, have an opportunity to get together with another twin, mm -hmm. um, especially if you have one that has transitioned or passed, um, because you do, you feel like your twin power died with your twin, but the truth is no. Once you're a twin, you're always, always a, a twin, twin. Mm -hmm. and you, as soon as you get around another twin, you realize, man, that power is still there. There's this m amazing synchronization. Mm -hmm. You can feel, if you allow yourself to really connect with another twin, you can feel them from distance. You can finish each other's sentences. And mm -hmm. that's where the twinful piece comes in. Right. When a twin first loses their twin, there's absolutely a twinless, what I would call a twinless mm -hmm. grief season. And the idea for us in encouraging folks to move forward Mm -hmm. into the twinful season is yes, you need to grieve, you need to have that time, uh, but allow yourself, as, your, as other people have said, you, things change. As your life continues to go on, as difficult as that is, you'll have new experiences and you'll meet people. So for myself, my twin passed when I was, uh, right before I turned four, 19 mm -hmm. days before I turned four. So similar to her situation, all of a sudden, poof, she's gone. Wow. And how and did your twin die? She had leukemia. Wow. So she was so diagnosed was it six months. was a long term? Oh, six months. She was diagnosed six months before sh she passed, went through chemo, and I remember visiting her in the hospital. I remember she died five days after Christmas. Wow. So I remember our last Christmas together. I, I remember when they told me that she had passed, that she was in heaven with Jesus, and I'm like, who's this Jesus guy? Let's go meet him. You know, that was in yeah. my mind as a child. It's like, I want to go to his house. Exactly. So I can see her, you yes. know, so and it took a, took a very, very long time. It wasn't until I was about 10 before I fully understood that I would never see her again. Yeah. And it wasn't until I was about 36 before I was able to transition out of twinless into twin full. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it took me quite a while. And how really did you do it? What did you do? So, For those twins who are yeah. watching, how do I make that 
move? How did you do it? For me, it was a very conscious choice. I had I had lived so much of my life feeling broken. Half of me died with my twin, and mm-hmm. you know all of these very not so positive thoughts. And I went honestly. I went through a major medical illness, and I made a conscious choice. I said, I don't want to live the rest of my life feeling broken. Yeah. I've been given an opportunity to carry on here and I need to do something with this. I need mm-hmm. to, to bring hope and light and joy to this world. Mm-hmm. And, and so I became very, very proactive with my own self-care, my own conscious thinking. I, I learned to translate my twin less language to twin full language. Mm-hmm. So rather than talking about my twin always, uh, my, a part of me died with my twin, it's my twin is always with me. Mm-hmm. Um, instead of speaking about the, a part of me feels like it's missing. Now tell us I'm, about your book. Oh, so. So wonderful. And, it, and a, it's kind of shiny, so we're going to yeah. have trouble reading it, but it says the amazing things can happen, right? Yes, so I learned about the Twinless Twin Support Group International in 1996, and I didn't have the courage, because I was so fearful, Mm -hmm. of meeting another twin until January of this year. It took me that long to get the courage to do that. And a gentleman by the name of Trevor was a part of our Facebook group. Uh, He was a Twinless Twin, and when I first joined the Facebook group, he was very encouraging and positive and supportive and said, you need to meet a twin, you need to meet a twin. Mm -hmm. In January, I finally had an opportunity to meet Lisa Watson. She was the first Twinless Twin I ever met, Mm. and that was when the first time I experienced the reignition of our, to reignite our twin power. Mm -hmm. It was the first time I had that, and it was so overwhelming and just absolutely amazing. It was the first time in my life that I actually felt like a twin again. Wow. Which was amazing, amazing, amazing. I can tell how amazing. It's emotional for me to even think of, to even be in that space. So, unfortunately, four months later, Trevor actually took his life Uh and committed suicide. And so Mm -hmm. I... How old was Trevor? He was in his mid-40s. And so I was... His twin had also committed suicide mm-hmm. oh. much many many years before, and he never able was never able to transition from twinless to mm-hmm. twinful. Even though he was a huge encouragement to our entire community, right? So I grieved that loss for about three or four days, and I thought to myself, I can't I can't just sit here and do nothing. I have to do something, mm-hmm. and that's where the journey of a thousand healing hugs came. Trevor encouraged me to find Lisa and hug her. Mm. It transformed my life, and I thought if I had just gotten to him and hugged him, he might have still been here with us. Mm. So I made this crazy post on Facebook in our group and I said, I need to find a thousand of you. I'm gonna travel all over the country and I'm gonna hug you. Thankfully, we have a technology company so it's easy for me to do business Mm -hmm. from the road and I live in a bus and we're traveling all the time anyways. Show us your book, open it up and and talk about the pages. The twins that I meet with, oh, yeah. um, yeah. we're keeping cool. track of how many that I've met with, and they sign their name. And <laughs> there I am right here. Put oh, a little yeah. message. You open it right to that page. Oh. Yeah, and so it's, you know, they just put words of encouragement. My youngest twin was two and a half. Let's wow. see what her words of encouragement were on that page back. I don't even remember what I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't look too long. No, yeah, so... I wrote, um, Carolyn Shane, twin to Carrie, with love to you from our heart, from one heart to another. Love your mama, because she refers to me as her mama. I love it. Good and best wishes in all of your endeavors. Oh, that's great. Oh, yeah. Awesome. And some people are signing that. So they're signing it. And then once I reach 1,000, I have contacted Trevor's family, his surviving family. And we're going to have a little gathering. And this will be given to the family in memory of him. Oh, wow. I love that. That's beautiful. So, that, that is, is so wonderful. Now, uh, I know you're a technology person, and could you put those on the book online so everybody can see it? Or oh, absolutely. And we, I have a, a twinful twin Tasha on Facebook is is a place that people can follow so they can follow the journey. And then journey of a thousand healing hugs dot com is mm-hmm. where if there's twinless twins watching this and they want to be part of the project, I need a thousand of you. So please, I love <laughs> it. please go to the site and request a hug. I need you. And, and they need you, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it's a two way street, like you said, mm-hmm. just to be with other twins and to be connecting is so powerful. 
I, I tease my twins that I get to hug. I, I share with them. I, I, I've missed out on so many hugs because my twin passed when I was so young. Mm -hmm. So it's just as much for me as it is for them. Yeah, that's wonderful. Uh, Carolyn, what about you? Do you have a, a presence on the web or do we no. just go to Twinless Twins? You could just go to Twinless Twins Support Group International. Yeah. And dot com if you want. So yes, it's a wonderful organization. Um, we have conferences every year, um, usually the second or third weekend in um, July. And um, we have a Facebook page with, I think, over 3,000 people mm -hmm. who are online communicating with one another. And um, we're there. And we do acknowledge, um, as you mentioned earlier, that there will be more um, twin, um, twinless twins in the yes, future, there will be. and and yeah. possibly multi more multiple births. And, than and just I yes. think so I think not just for twins; yeah. it could be for triplets or whatever. Yeah. And I think one of the things that uh, you're bringing to mind too is the fact that I mean, maybe your twin, like Elvis, the, his twin never lived, mm -hmm. well, you cool. know, and and realizing that that's still. You still, still got that bond. Well, you still got that line. That, that was, I think, my one of my biggest takeaways. The nine months that you know your twin before you're born is very powerful, and it's a significant connection. And society can minimize that. Yes. Mm -hmm. But twins don't minimize it because yeah. they understand how powerful that right. bond is. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you I, know, I was just really impressed when Heidi came back from the twinless twins, and she's like. Wow, I thought I knew something about sibling loss. And, and I thought yeah. I knew something a lot about twin loss. <laughs> yeah. no. So yeah. one of the um, things I, I want to share about the support group, which is so important, yeah. is that they do have regional meetings as yeah. well. They don't oh. just do the annual conference. Right. So they have gatherings in, in all over the world, actually. And, wow, that's and, great. And so, so if you go to the website, um, there is the, it is a nonprofit and member. there is a membership you can become a member, and it's only $50 a year, wow, but it helps facilitate these gatherings. Mm -hmm. They are an absolutely incredible organization, um, especially when you first lose your twin. Mm -hmm. um, there's, a whole, all, whole, there's a whole tribe of us, wow. um, and we're right there to help support and encourage everyone. And So I highly awesome. recommend any twin to, to go to that site and become familiar yeah. with and them. And if I may, um, just to stress the point that you're not a twin when you're conscious of it, we talked about losing a twin bef even before birth. So if any, our organization supports any person mm -hmm. who lost their twin in utero yeah. on. So you don't have to think, oh, well, I didn't know my twin. Yes. My twin died before you know, birth. That's not so. It's from in utero all the way through. Mm -hmm. And we have guest speakers, mm -hmm. and we have programs, and there's books, and there's, and there's always somebody you can reach out to. Mm -hmm. And I also share learned that it's never too late to go. And it's because never too some late. people, Fred Donegan, who was mm -hmm. on our show a while back, you know, they it takes them years to really mm -hmm. fully wrap their arms around what happened, and you know, sometimes they then need it down the road. And they, it, you know, it, he said he got very depressed, and it hit him, as you know, like a ton of bricks, and he really needed the organization. Mm -hmm. Right at that mm -hmm. point, well, I think there's a That's lot of important. fear associated mm -hmm. with the passing as well. How are people going to view you if you say you're a twin and your twin's no longer alive? Right. And, and then it, it can be painful to have to discuss that. Mm -hmm. And and also, I will never be as c close to anyone as I was with my twin. Right. And, and you know, there's that, a lot that of that brings me to something about still missing you, because mm -hmm. we're going to have a song yep. now by Denise Ganyulin. Ganyulin. And she is going to sing Still Missing You. And yeah. she is a singer-songwriter whose daughter, Holland, mm -hmm. died. And uh, we never forget them. And we're no, still missing you. That. And I, I want to thank you guys so much for being on the show today. It's ve been very enlightening to me. And I know Heidi was very enlightened by her experiences. Yes, and I love giving voice to the twinship and the twin and the twinfulness that you both have. Because once a twin, always a twin. You're never twinless yeah. when you're a twin. That's what well, we want to thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And we want to thank you all for watching this show today. And Heidi and I want to remind you that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours till you find your own. And please enjoy this wonderful song by Denise. It's 
hard to believe I mean and this is where I'm at you're not here and I so bad.